This Olympic situation is bonkers. During the 2024 closing ceremony, Paris showed the world what they called the Golden Voyager, and people are outraged. Half of the internet claimed that this was another dark move aimed against Christians, whilst the other half claimed, no, this golden voyager represents a space traveller who found this golden disc that we sent out into space during 1977. I actually have a completely different interpretation of this performance, but before I get into it, I want to say this. Whatever happened to family entertainment? I mean, are my kids the only kids in the world who, if they were at that closing ceremony, they would have had to look away because it was too scary for them. Listen to me, if that dark performance is seen as suitable for children, because after all the closing ceremony is suitable for all ages, is it not? Tell me this, why is it that the message that Jesus Christ loves the world is now seen as unsuitable for children? Because after all, Jesus was removed from the schools long ago. If I'm wrong, tell me, but if you're not against the message that I'm trying to share, please do subscribe and stick around for the next part. Now, just before I share with you my off-the-curb interpretation of this, please know, as I say in all of my videos, I could be totally way off with this. These are just my thoughts. It's all guesswork. This isn't a prophecy. This isn't a word from the Lord. No, it's just what I thought when I watched it. The more I looked at it, I thought, are they doing what I think they're doing? Has the artistic director taken Revelation chapter 9, that's what I'm going to get to, and use that as their inspiration for this performance? They might not have done an as we go through Revelation chapter 9. Please know, this is not me trying to fit the scripture into the closing ceremony. As I've just said, I just wonder, have they taken pieces from this and used it? So if you like, again, mock Christians. Maybe they've not, maybe they haven't. Maybe they're trying to all hide it because they really upset a lot of us in the opening ceremony. But let's just look at Revelation chapter 9 anyway, because I want to show you the similarities that I saw in the performance that are also here in scripture. The first thing that got me kind of curious is when I saw this guy. Do you remember him in the video? We literally covered an entire video all about this man who was in the opening ceremony, who appears to be the Antichrist. And if you've not seen that video, check out the description and we'll talk about it again at the end of the video. But here this guy is, and there's a transaction with a flag with the golden voyager. And I just got wondering, okay, if this in the opening ceremony was a depiction from Revelation, could it be that they decides to do another one, but this time they're trying to make it hush-hush because, again, all the Christians that were upset by what they did in the opening ceremony. So Revelation 9 verse 1 says, The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. Now, let me just say this, I'm not the only one who's picked up on this, but as we saw this golden voyager fall down, others have picked up on this and said, it does seem that this seems like the picture of Lucifer falling from heaven. Again, I don't know what you think of this, but it is interesting to consider, because in Revelation there is this picture of this star which falls down to heaven, which is clearly Lucifer falling down uh, to earth from the heavens when he was cast out of heaven for being too proud. And then of course we see this big huge Olympic Olympic ring. Now another reason why the directors say that they've used this golden voyager is because this Olympics has been the years of records. So they sent out this golden uh, record into the sky in 1977 and they're using this link to say okay this is the year of records and that's why this, this golden voyager has come down to earth to make contact with us. He's got the record with all of the information all about us humans and he's come down to tell us that he knows about us. When I saw the the ring and again I'm going to have to say this the whole way through the video. This is just me as a friend talking to another friend. Don't take it too seriously. But it's almost like, you know, th this was the, the abyss. You know, it's like the opening, the portal of the abyss. And then we see all of these beings around it. Then look at verse 2 with me. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke of the abyss. And then of course in this performance, again this is a similarity that makes you wonder, all of this smoke starts to appear and then of course it's all dark, the sun has gone out. Then look at verse 3 with me. And out of the smoke locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions and of the earth. 
So this is the part that really got me thinking. There was sort of a mystery behind who is this golden person? Who is this golden voyager? And when I looked at him straight away, he looked just like a locust to me, you know, like something you'd see out of Bugs Life. Like, is it Hopper, I think, is, is the main character. You've got these big antennas, And it says about these locusts that they will have almost human faces. They'll have human likeness. And here we have this, this, this creature. And they all look like locusts, really, all around. So that's what really made me think, are they trying to depict the locusts in the abyss? And then this off-the-curb theory of mine gets reaffirmed even more when I looked at verse 7, and it says, the locusts look like horses prepared for battle. On their heads they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Now I know some of you will be thinking this is way too far of a reach, but can you see what I'm kind of getting at? Perhaps they could have looked at this and used it as inspiration, because here we have this golden locust. We also saw um, the Greek god Nike, which people were saying looks like a fallen angel. And then, of course, you know, in the abyss, we hear that the Antichrist will rise from the abyss. So we've got this figure that most people, most Christians who watched it, did say, yes, I, I do believe this man riding on the horse was meant to be the Antichrist. And here he is in the abyss with the golden locust, all these locusts around. We've got the, the fallen angel. And then suddenly, as that ring, if you like, as the portal is lifted up, and it joins the other Olympic rings. It's almost like all of these locusts are trying to, to grab, they're trying to get out because they know they're going to be locked in this abyss, which if you read the scripture, this abyss is a place that, that even the fallen angels say, this is the worst place possible. Please, you know, there's a story of Jesus when uh, Jesus met a person who was overcome by a spirit and he cast that legion out and legion begged and said, please do not send us back into the abyss because this abyss is a place that is so dark, so evil, that even they are afraid of it. So again, I don't know, were they using that? It's just something that I thought and this is my channel, so <laughs> as people say, I've got freedom of speech to, to just share some thoughts uh, with you. But don't take it too seriously, what I've said. What I really do on this channel, and you probably know this by now, is I take different ideas, I take different theories, different things that are trending, and then I use it for my main message, which is this. It's to preach the gospel. So you might be wondering, Joe, how are you going to get to Jesus Christ from all of this on the closing ceremony? Well, as we've been thinking about the deepest hole in the world, the, the abyss, where all of these locusts will one day come out, that is true, I believe that. The Antichrist will one day rise out of there. The fallen angels are, are down there now. They're locked in chains of gloomy darkness because they left their boundaries and disobeyed God. That is all true. That is fact, okay? But could it be, okay, we've got this deep hole, but what about you? Did you know that you yourself have dug for yourself a hole with a sin-shaped shovel? Your sin has made you one day die. You see, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, just like you work a job, you work for many, many hours, you get a wage. So you and I have been working for, if you like, Lucifer, for the evil one. For many years without the Lord Jesus Christ, we've served our father, the father of lies, and we'll get a wage. Our wage is death. Our sin that we have accumulated, all the things that we love that God hates, all the wrong things on the internet you might watch, all the lies, all the times you're proud, all the times you think you're better than other people, all the times you've lost your temper, all the times you've tried to deceive others and get your way up on other people in the world, all of that sin will one day work yourself into a grave. But the good news is this, and this is what I want to share with you. The second part of the verse is, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, Jesus is the answer to our grave. You will one day go six feet under. Joe Kirby will one day go six feet under. But the Lord Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross, he took all of our wages, though he'd never done anything wrong, and he paid the debt that we could never pay. He paid the price for our sin with his own blood when he died on a cross. You see, as we've seen in the closing ceremony, as we saw in the opening ceremony, 
ceremony, men loved darkness more than the light, and they tried to put the light of the world out. But the Lord Jesus Christ was willing to bear our darkness, our sin, in his own body. And there he died in our place. There he was a substitute for our sin, so that you and I can be forgiven. And if we put our trust in him, if, there's a big if, will you put your trust in him? Though you will go into that grave, you won't stay in there long because when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to raise all the people back to eternal life. Those who've not trusted him, they will rise. Those who've rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, they will rise, but they'll rise to then be cast into a bottomless pit, into hell for all of eternity. But those who've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will rise to eternal life. The one who is risen knows how to rise us back from the dead, if that makes sense. And he's willing to do that for you if you'll trust in him. Perhaps, yes, you, you don't see all of these things in the closing ceremony that I'm talking about. But perhaps you do see there is a darkness that seems to be covering the earth. You just have to switch on the news and just hear about these things that are going on all around the world. And you see that darkness really is reigning so much more than it was even five years ago. Certainly more than ten years ago because the Bible says that things will wax worse. If you can see that, do you not want light in your life? Do you not want the Lord Jesus Christ to come and shine his light inside of your life and to change you, to, to give you a new heart and new desires so that you can turn from all of this darkness and turn to him? Would you like that? We'll call on the name of the Lord right now and find salvation. I'm going to say this now, but I'm not 100% certain of this, but it's very unlikely I will make another video on the Olympics. I think this is my fifth one so far, but so many things have been coming out from the Olympics. So much darkness on something which for many years, many of us have enjoyed and seen so much light. There has been wonderful things with athletes standing up and being proud to name the Lord Jesus Christ. But in this final video, perhaps you've watched them all and yet you're still not saved. In this final video, will this finally be the time where you say, yes, yes, I do turn to Christ. I want that eternal life. I want what all of these Christians have. I want to be saved and have my name written in heaven and know that when I go into that grave, it's not the end. It's only the beginning. If you'd like that for yourself, Call upon him now. Just whatever words are in your heart right now, ask him to save you and the God who hears all things will answer your prayer and give you eternal life. But hey now, if you would like to see that video I made all about the opening ceremony where it seems like we're seeing someone who seems just like the Antichrist, click here. And if you would like to know more about the abyss and the deepest holes that right now exist in our earth, the deepest holes that have ever been dug, check this video out because I think you'll find it very interesting. And if you are new to the channel and you found this video helpful or you'd like to hear more in the future, please do subscribe. We'd love to see you again. God bless you all and thank you for watching.